This is BYU Baseball on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. And drives that to center. Center fielder Apodaca going back, going back to the track, and it's over the wall! Live play-by-play coverage of BYU Baseball is brought to you by doTERRA. doTERRA, proud sponsor of the BYU Baseball team. Now let's get you ready for Cougar Baseball. Here's the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Good evening, Cougar baseball fans. Welcome inside Smith's Ballpark in downtown Salt Lake City as tonight the surging BYU Cougars visit the equally resurgent Utah Utes in the renewal of a rivalry that will tonight be contested on the diamond for a 374th time. BYU has precisely doubled up the Utes in the all-time series. 248 wins to 124 with one game tied. Last time these two teams met, exactly five weeks ago tonight, BYU led 10-0 on the way to a 10-3 victory. I'm your play-by-play presenter, Greg Grubel, BYU Baseball Communications Director Duff Tittle alongside tonight. And with starting lineups and the opening pitch coming up, let's hear now from BYU Interim Head Coach Trent Pratt in our leadoff interview presented by doTERRA. doTERRA, pursue what's pure. And this evening, Coach Pratt talks about the unique appeal and challenge of these in-state games. No, you never know. We, we do know that those teams are going to compete really hard against us, and we're going to go there and Hopefully we can we can match them and, and come away with a win tonight. What does the BYU Utah game mean to you and your guys? Well, it means a lot. We always want to win the in-state games. I mean, the things it means a lot recruiting. It means a lot for a lot of things. But yeah, you want to you want to protect your home turf, and hopefully we can do that tonight. You're a different team than you were just five weeks ago. I think only four guys are still in that same batting order from five weeks ago. Yeah, it's crazy how things change with injuries and and, and just some different guys stepping up and playing good. So. Hopefully we just keep kind of momentum we had this weekend and just and keep finding ways to win. Staff day today, you'd say uh, Peyton Cole will get his first career start, yet at the same time, it's not scripted for two and then he's out. You want to see him pitch well. Yeah, we hope he goes out and gives us a good start um, and goes out and, and gets some momentum for us and he can throw up a couple of zeros and then and we can go from there. What does staff day mean to you if it is that? Um, just all hands on deck. Whatever we have to do to win this game, there's some guys that we want to get, we really want to pitch tonight and it's just everyone come in and just, hey, you have an inning, go do your job for an inning. If you do good, then, hey, you got one more, and go shut it down to zero for the next one, too. A pair of 20-win teams going head-to-head tonight, and Utah just took two of three from a pretty good Arizona team. Yeah, it's going to be a challenge for us. They're playing really good right now. They're swinging the bat good. They've been pitching better. So hopefully it's a good matchup tonight, and somehow we can come out on top. The weather forecast is a little squirrely, and it seems that whenever BYU goes to Salt Lake, things tend to get that way. Someone just said in the locker room, I think Mitch McNair was like, are we finally going to have a warm game at Utah? And I was like, <laughs> Maybe not. I think so, but there's a chance it might rain too. He's like, I'll go figure. So, hey, we can't control that. So we've been through it enough that these guys, I think they're prepared for something bad weather down there. So hopefully, hopefully it stays dry for most of the night. We can get a game in. What do you like most about your group as a whole right now? I just like how they're fighting for each other. It seems like everyone's fighting for, for the guy you know next to them, um, whether they're in the lineup or out of the lineup. I'm sure you felt that. You saw it this weekend. It's, I think that's the cool thing right now is it really feels like these guys are really pulling for each other and, and really want what's best for us as a team. All right, Trent, great chatting with you. Thank you for the preview. We'll talk to you post-game. Thanks, Greg. All right, that is BYU interim head coach Trent Pratt. Time now for tonight's starting lineups, courtesy of Big O Tires. Your local Big O Tires has financing available. Big O Tires, the team you trust. We'll start with the visitors, your BYU Cougars. Head coach is Trent Pratt. The interim head coach is 3-1 and one on the season. That series at Nebraska last weekend was a Coach Pratt's first time as the uh, dugout boss for BYU had a good weekend. Leading off for BYU, playing second base, number five, Ozzie Pratt. Hitting second, playing shortstop, number two, Brock Watkins. Hitting third, the center fielder, number six, Mitch McIntyre. Hitting cleanup, playing first base, number 35, Jacob Wilk. Hitting fifth and playing right field, number 27, Ryan Sapiti. Hitting sixth and playing third base, number 25, Austin Deming. Hitting seventh and DHing tonight, number 16, Jacob Rogers. Hitting eighth, the catcher and the reigning WCC player of the week, number 24, Mason Strong. Out of the nine hole, the left fielder, number 43, Dawson Hall. BYU's starting pitcher when he gets out there will be Peyton Cole. Peyton making his first career start. Peyton 1-0 on the year with a 3.38 ERA. He wears jersey number 23. Starting pitcher for the Utes, number 36, Randon Hostert. He's 2-0 with a 5.13 ERA. The right-hander is warming up. 
The lineup for the Utes around Hoster, leading off and playing right field. Number 27, Kai Roberts. Hitting second, the second baseman, number nine, Landon Fry. Hitting third, the third baseman, number seven, Chase Anderson. Hitting cleanup, the left fielder, number 13, T.J. Clarkson, the offensive leader for the Utes. Hitting fifth, the D.H., number 26, Jaden Kiernan. Hitting sixth, the first baseman, number 10, Alex Beza. Hitting seventh, the catcher, number 24, Davis Kopp. Hitting eighth, and playing center field, number 15, Carter Booth. And heading ninth, the shortstop, number 39, Gabe Singer. Gabe Singer fielding in place of Matt Richardson. The Utes' exceptional shortstop dinged up and not playing tonight. So Singer, who doesn't play a lot, will be at short tonight. And that's your lineup for the Utah Utes. They'll be in red jerseys, white pants, red caps, and block Utah in letters and an arch across the chest. BYU will be in the navy caps, gray pinstripe jerseys and pants. And the script is Brigham Young on the chest. Brigham in cursive. And in the tail of the M, you have the word young. It's an attractive new look for BYU. Greg Rubel. And sitting alongside tonight is BYU's Baseball Communications Director, Duff Tittle. Duff, good to have you with me. It's nice to be with you tonight, Greg. <laughs> Thanks no, for the opportunity. You're no stranger to the headset. People know you more behind the scenes, but you've got some reps behind you in the past. I've had a little bit, yeah. <laughs> Back in the day when I was at BYU Hawaii, I did some minor league baseball downtown in Honolulu during the summer. So there's a few years between those two, though. And with the younger set, you've coached dozens if not hundreds of games yeah i coached uh, travel baseball and uh little league baseball for about 13 years so i've probably been on the bucket for about 700 games i guess or more somewhere in there i love it we're ready to get underway you'll be hearing from duff intermittently tonight ozzy pratt squares and takes high on the 89 mile per hour fastball from hoster for ball one ozzy pratt byu's batting average leader it's ready to get this one underway for BYU. And that's two balls taken by Hostert. I think Ozzy's really starting to kind of feel his way into this role as a leadoff guy because previous in this season, he likes to come out and swing at that first pitch. But he realizes he's got a different job to do. The 2-0. And he'll foul that back over the roof here at Smith's Ballpark. Out of play. Goes to 2-1. and one. We're at Smith's Ballpark where the seating capacity is 14,511. Home of the Salt Lake Bees. The 2-1. And that's grounded to first base. Alex Bezo will scoop it himself, step on the bag, and that'll be it for Ozzie Pratt. So one gone quickly here in the top of the first inning. BYU and Utah met exactly five weeks ago tonight. And BYU won that one 10-3 after going out in front 10-0. And that was a night with a similar forecast. The rain held off till about the eighth mm -hmm. inning, and it was kind of misty to finish things off. And the uh, forecasters tonight say that there could be, could be some precipitation in the offing. As that's a take and strike one on the outside corner by Brock Watkins hitting second. Brock and Mitch McIntyre are the only two to start all 34 games for BYU and all doing it at the same position. Brock at shortstop and Mitch at center field as Brock fouls that one out of play over the roof down the first baseline. So ahead of Watkins is Hostert 0-2. Brock's really coming into his own this year, both defensively and at the plate. A lot of big base hits for us. Take outside. Good eye for Brock. Goes to 1-2. and two. BYU's runs and hits and total bases leader is Brock Watkins. Holds the bat over his right shoulder and will take high. Two consecutive balls. That was just over the top half of the zone. So two balls and two strikes from Hostert to Watkins. Had a good game the first meeting against the Utes. The 2-2. And that'll be in the dirt. Count goes full after Hostert got ahead 0-2 on Watkins. One gone here in the top of the first. Hoster making his seventh start of the season. And that's a swing and a miss and a frontwards K. Down on strikes is Brock Watkins. So two gone here in the top of the first inning. Hoster has his first strikeout of the evening as Mitch McIntyre will now dig in. The center fielder, Mitch McIntyre, was 0 for 2 with a run scored and a couple of walks in the 10-3 win over Utah here five weeks ago. Second left-handed bat in Trent Pratt's lineup. Ozzie Pratt bats lefty. He led things off. That's taken strike one by Mitch. 
Brock Watkins from the right side, and then Mitch McIntyre hitting left. The other left-handed bat in the lineup comes out of the nine-hole, Dawson Hall. The 0-1 to Mitch. And that's lined out of play just over the roof down the third base side. So Hoster, as he was ahead of Watkins 0-2, has no balls and two strikes to McIntyre. BYU's on-base percentage leader. The 0-2 to Mitch. And that's in the dirt for ball one. Kind of a chase pitch there from Hoster. Mitch had just the one hit in the weekend series win at Nebraska, but found so many other ways to contribute and made a lot of good contact. You can, you can have a low hit weekend up and still have a good series of at-bats, and that was Mitch this past weekend. Oh, for sure, especially in the game of baseball, not only at the plate, but you can do all kinds of things with your glove, right? And especially in low-scoring games like we had in Nebraska. 2-2, opposite field, left field corner, left fielder running in, and it's going to drop fair. That's going to be a that's gonna be a double for Mitch. That hung up in the air, and where that landed, it was about a foot inside the left field line. The left fielder Clarkson gave chase, and that just dropped a foot fair. And with that, Mitch McIntyre has his 11th double of the season. The team leader in doubles is on second base with one gone, with two gone, beg your pardon, here in the top of the first. He's just having an outstanding year in so many different ways. Team leader, and you look across the stat sheet, and he's leading us in just about everything. Jacob Wilk now hitting with a runner in scoring position. Needs to boost that runner in scoring position number. Does Wilk? Right-hander Wilk. Right-handed bat of Jacob Wilk. Scoreless here in the top of the first. And that's another foul through the batter's box and back to the screen. No balls and a strike to Wilk. Mitch McIntyre with a two-out double. An opposite field fly to left field that dropped in front of the on-rushing T.J. Clarkson. So McIntyre's 11th double of the year has him in scoring position. Two out, one on for BYU. Top one here in Salt Lake City. And Jacob will take. And that's three consecutive batters who've fallen behind 0-2 to Hostert now. A take outside at 88. Three-pitch mix from Hostert. Fastball slider change. That was a fastball piped in for strike two. The 0-2 to Wilkes got to stay alive in the count here with McIntyre on second. The kick and fire from Hoster. And that will be in the gap to right center. Will it get down? No! A diving catch made by Roberts in right field. Kai Roberts with the full extension to rob a hit and a run from BYU to end the top of the first. For the Cougars, no runs on one hit, no errors, one left on. We go bottom of the first. Cougars and Utes scoreless on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is BYU Baseball. Now back to the ballpark and the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Kai Roberts leads off of the Utes here in the bottom of the first. Takes ball one from Peyton Cole. Kai Roberts, who ended the top of the first with a tremendous diving catch in right field, now leads off the game for the Utes in the batter's box. The 0-1 from Peyton Cole. Peyton making his first career start, and that slice to the screen foul for one ball and one strike. So Kai Roberts makes the great play to end the inning and then starts to lead off the bottom of the inning. And... Duff. Kai Roberts is a guy with some BYU ties. He does, yeah. His dad actually played for the Cougars um, back in the, in the mid-90s. And then he coached uh, with Vance Law and his staff for a little while. Um, good player, really good player. Change up from Peyton to make two balls and a strike the count against Roberts. Peyton winds up and delivers. And again, change. This one stays high for three balls and a strike. Boy, when that bat came off, or the ball came out the bat of Wilkes' bat, I thought that was going to be in the gap. It was hit really hard, and he made a great play to get to it. Looked like a run-scoring gapper for Jacob, but Roberts made an excellent catch, and he swings and misses to fill the count against Peyton Cole. Three balls and two strikes. Peyton Cole, three-pitch miss. Fastball change and a slider. The 3-2 delivery from Peyton, and that'll be high. Lost him. So a leadoff walk for Kai Roberts. Staff day for BYU, but they were hoping Peyton could pitch as many strong innings as he can. Some staff days you'll see scripted where a guy will definitely go only two, and then you'll have the next few pitchers scripted and maybe even their duration relative to innings. But tonight they just handed the ball to Peyton and said, give us what you got. 
And we'll see what that gets BYU on this staff day. So Kai Roberts leads off with a walk. He's 8 for 9 on the stolen base tries, by the way, as he leads with Landon Fry. Hitting righty after the left-handed Kai Roberts took his base. Two lefties in the lineup for interim head coach Todd Williams. Roberts who led off and Alex Beza hitting sixth. Everything else righty. Landon Fry with Peyton checking. Roberts at first. Wilk makes a swipe but Roberts is back. No balls and a strike from Peyton Cole to Landon Fry, the second baseman. Leads the Utes and hits second in batting average. 356 on the year, and the Utes are hitting it well of late. Again, Utah's the better hitting team. BYU the better pitching team in this in-state battle. Landon Fry taps home plate with the end of the barrel and settles in and waits the 0-1. That's Chopper to Deming. Deming will fire to second for one. They got the lead. Oh, they call him safe. Did Ozzie either drop it? At second, Austin Deming handled the grounder at third, fired to Ozzy at second, it appeared to be in time. The call is safe. The ball may have come out of the glove I think of he Ozzie Pratt, unless he just beat it, but I thought he was there in time. Yeah, he was there in time. I think he short hopped him on the throw, and then it just popped out of his glove. So, it's first and second for the Utes, and no one out. That's tough luck. BYU should have had the lead runner there on the grounder to Austin Deming at third. It was a long throw to second, but it was in time. The ball popped out of the leather, and now it's first and second. No one out for Chase Anderson. So some tough luck for Peyton Cole on the hill. He loses the first batter on a leadoff walk. And then Landon Fry, which should have been just a simple fielder's choice, ends up first and second with none out. So Roberts at second, Fry at first, and Chase Anderson, the third baseman, digs in. One ball, no strikes to Anderson. Peyton Cole working first base side of the rubber. Looks back at second. Kicks and fires and gets it on the inside edge for strike one. Change by Peyton. Evens the count one and one. I'm going to call that a fielding error. An E4 on Ozzie Pratt. And that'll be lined just foul down the first base line. That would have scored two. <laughs> yeah, that would have definitely scored two. And they always talk about football being a game of inches, but baseball could be that way too. Yeah. So Landon Fry reaching on the fielder's choice, the 5 4 fielder's choice, and Kai Roberts advancing to second on the E4, the Ozzie Pratt fielding error on the throw from Deming. So Roberts at second, Fry at first. First and second, no one out. One, two, the count to Anderson. Was feet away from a run scoring, a two run scoring double on that last pitch. The right handed bat of Chase Anderson takes for two and two. Just underway here in Salt Lake City. That was a fastball at 89 from Peyton Cole. BYU scored first in the first meeting here five weeks ago and just kept on scoring. 10 nothing was the lead before the Utes played it to run. Peyton Cole on the hill. The count even at 2-2. Two and two. Kicks and fires. That's foul just over the screen and off the window of the sweet level here. At <laughs> some good glass there. That was sturdy. Yeah, wow. That looked like I might rattle it pretty good. Peyton Coles, older brother, former Cougar Taylor in the Boston Red Sox organization, pitching with Worcester right now, I believe, in AAA. Yeah, he's appeared in four games so far this year. He's just really coming into his own with COVID hit, unfortunately, at the 2-2, and that'll be taken low. BYU thought that might have been a strip. The BYU dugout was ready to applaud the strikeout, and instead <laughs> it'll be fulfilled the count at 3-2. and two. Blue Jays, Angels, and now Red Sox, the organizations for Taylor Cole. Taylor grew up in California, graduated high school in Vegas, just like Peyton did, although they were at different high schools in Las Vegas. Three balls, two strikes. Cole on the hill, two on for the Utes, no one out here in the bottom of the first, and that's another walk, and the bases are loaded, no one out for Utah here in the bottom of the first inning. So it's two walks in the inning for Peyton Cole. And this with some tough luck between the walks as that fielding error kept it from being one on, one out. 
to two on no out and now bases loaded no one out and early there's action in the BYU bullpen pitching coach Michael Bradshaw will stroll on out to the hill and join Mason Strong in a conversation with Peyton Cole so Peyton Cole's first career start uh, not going according to the script it's bases loaded no one out here in the bottom of the first with Kai Roberts going to third Landon Fry to second and Chase Anderson on the base on balls at first So four batters in, and the uh, ball hasn't left the infield yet. Only one ball in play was that grounder to third. And the throw from Deming to Pratt at second got away, E4, which allowed Kai Roberts to get to second after his leadoff walk. And, and with walks on either side of that error, it's bases loaded, no one gone, as Utah threatens to open the scoring here in the bottom of the first inning. So BYU has the lone hit in the game. But Utah is in good position to score the game's first run. That'll be a fly ball to center field. Mitch McIntyre will handle. Tagging is Roberts, and he will come home with the game's first run. Other runners will hold. And it's an RBI sack fly for T.J. Clarkson, who drilled that first pitch he saw to center field. And Utah leads by a score of 1-0. Statistically in college baseball right now, that if you walk the leadoff guy, 80% of the time it's going to score. And he scored. Sure did. So TJ Clarkson brings home Kai Roberts with the game's first run. Utah one, BYU no score, bottom one. Here at Smith's Ballpark in downtown Salt Lake City, Jaden Kiernan, the DH, now hits with one out and two on. Runners at second and first. Fry at second, Anderson at first. Peyton Cole kicks and fires high and inside for ball one. So in the first inning, right-hander Jake, Port uh, Jake Porter is already up in the BYU pen. Utah 1, BYU 0. The 1-0 from Peyton. Glances back at second, winds up and delivers. Foul ball over the roof. Down the first base side. One ball, one strike, one out, two on for Utah. You're in the bottom of the first inning. BYU does have a winning record this year when the opponent scores first. BYU's 9-8 when falling behind, and the Cougars have fallen behind in this one. Cougars looking to minimize the damage here. Double play would get you out of the inning. First and second. One out for Jaden Kiernan. 1-1 one, one the count. Foul to the screen. One ball, two strikes. Kiernan ended up on his knee on that follow-through. That was a wicked hack. He just didn't get all of it. One ball, two strikes to Kiernan. The batting average leader for Utah. 357 on the season. Coming in two tonight. Right-hander on the hill and Cole. Right-handed bat of Jaden Kiernan in the box. Didn't play in the first game against BYU. And he's a regular. He was must have been dinged last time they met five weeks ago because he would have been in otherwise. 1-2. Chopper, this could be two. Watkins handle, steps on second for one, and the throw to Wilk, and that is the double play to get BYU out of the inning. The 6-U-3 DP, and just one run crosses. Utes go from bases loaded one out, or no one out, and get just the one run for Utah in the bottom of the first. One run on no hits. There was an error, and there were two left on. We go top of the second. Utah 1, BYU 0 on the new skin. BYU Sports Network. For more BYU baseball, let's rejoin the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. BYU baseball brought to you by doTERRA. doTERRA, a proud sponsor of the BYU baseball team. And BYU leads off its second inning, down 1-0. With Ryan Sapiti swinging and missing at the first pitch he sees from Randon Hostert. Here in the top of the second, Randon Hostert, the right-hander on the hill for the Utes. 0-1. One and one. Home plate umpire Randy Sutton. This is a little high, a little outside. One ball, one strike to Sapiti. BYU's RBI leader, 27, runs batted in on the year. Right-handed hitter. Will take high at 88 miles per hour. The fastball from Hoster, just outside the zone for ball two. Two and one to Sapiti. is striped. It'll roll to the left field corner. It'll be extra bases for Sapiti. 
handling in the corner as Clarkson will fire it in, but a stand-up double for Ryan Sapiti. Cougars have their leadoff man on second here to start the second inning. So a runner in scoring position for Austin Deming. Sapiti just laced that. Over the head of the third baseman and finds himself at second. So Utah scored off a leadoff walk. We'll see what BYU can do now with a leadoff double. Like how he stayed patient. Found a pitch that he liked. Austin Deming, back-to-back -back right-handed bats. Dem will dig in. Runner in scoring position is Sapiti at second. Austin hitting 154 with runners in scoring position. That's whistled low and away for ball one at 88 from Hoster. Austin Deming was one for four with a run scored and a strikeout in the first meeting against the Utes five weeks ago tonight. The 1-0 to Deming. Good contact. And that's going to be a gap in the left center. That will score Ryan Sapiti. BYU ties the game at one. And it's back-to-back -back two baggers for BYU. Austin Deming with a stand-up double. That ball was hit hard. That was laced in the gap in left center. So it's an RBI double for Austin Deming and BYU with now three hits on the game. Utah without a hit and yet has it <laughs> scored in the first. They scored in the first inning. BYU answers with a run here in the top of the second. It's 1-1 as Austin Deming brings home Ryan Sapiti back-to-back -back doubles for BYU. And that is the game of baseball. <laughs> you can get runs without even doing anything on your own and sometimes you hit the ball really hard right at people for outs. Jacob Rogers. The DH with Deming on second. BYU's tied the game at one. And it's high for ball one. So the Cougars settling in here. They did give up that first inning run to Utah. The Utes scoring without the benefit of a hit. It was two walks, an error, and a sacrifice fly. The Utes cobbled together that run. BYU got out of that inning with a double play. As the Utes had bases loaded, no one out, got just the one. And now the Cougars will answer with one of themselves in the top of the second inside as a paint job for strike one. One ball, one strike two. Jacob Rogers. Jacob's last start came 11 days to, uh, ago at, uh, versus Santa Clara. Gets the DH start tonight. Didn't play in the first game against Utah here in Salt Lake. The 0-1. And that will be through the right side. A single right fielder will come up throwing. They're going to hold... Deming, who was rounding third with Ames on home plate, but the hold there by third base coach Brent Herring. And it's back to back to back hits for BYU. Double, double, and single. The single to right for Rogers. So it's runners on the corners and no one out for BYU. Was held at third is Austin Deming. So Rogers advancing Deming to third. Great piece of hitting by Rogers, too. You got the, the shortstop in the second baseman that are worried about Deming. Right? They're trying to keep him close, back and forth, trying to get him close to the bag so he doesn't get too big of a lead. Huge hole between first and second. Just, you know, get a ball you can hit on the outer half of the plate and drive it in the hole. He is Duff Tittle. My name is Greg Grubel, and you are tuned to BYU Baseball here in the top of the second in a mound conference with interim head coach Todd Williams. The Utah infield and starting pitcher Randon Hoster. A couple of interim head coaches going head-to-head -head tonight. Todd Williams is on a two-week stint with uh, head coach Gary Henderson suspended for two weeks. Of course, BYU had a coaching change, and interim head coach Trent Pratt runs the dugout for BYU. The conference concludes. It's runners on the corners for BYU here in the top of the second. BYU one run on four hits already. Utah one run on no hits, but it's Sapiti with a double, Deming an RBI double, and Rogers a single to put runners on the corners. Sapiti having scored, Deming now at third, and Rogers at first with Mason Strong, your WCC Player of the Week, digging in. And still no one out here in the top of the second. BYU has already answered Utah's one in the bottom of the first. Are there more runs in store for BYU here in the top of the second? Mason Strong has hits in back-to-back -back games. We'll take Lowen inside for ball one at 88 from Hostert. What a great weekend he had in Nebraska. Three hits, home run to win a game. Uh, another run where he scored the winning run. Yeah, his first career home run was the game winner in that 7-6 to six decision on the Friday in Lincoln. And then on Saturday, he scores the game winning run. And that'll be sliced opposite field over the roof down the first baseline. Mason Strong, another one of those players that didn't play in the first 
Utah meeting. This lineup, so different from the one that played here in Salt Lake five weeks ago tonight. More on that as we go along. Strong wind blowing out to right right now. A wind from the north-northwest was around 20 miles per hour at first pitch, and it is whipping to right. And that's around the hip inside on Strong for ball two. Two balls and a strike to the freshman catcher, Strong. And I like, Duff, how the last two players of the week in the WCC are both BYU freshmen. Yes, absolutely. Really great. Kind of a little bit like what we had going on last year with Pintar. That's a swing and a miss. The ball gets away. Was there a tip on that? Yeah, they'll yeah. bring... They'll bring Rogers back to first, so a foul tip strike as it got away from the catcher. Two balls and two strikes. The catcher for Utah tonight is Davis Kopp. Hostert and Kopp are the battery for the Utes. Cole and Strong for BYU. And Mason Strong is at bat. Awaits the 2-2 from Randon Hostert. The check back at first, diving back is Rogers safely. Couldn't tell if that last play was a hit and run because uh, Strong swung so late. It's almost in the catcher's glove when he tried to, tried to take a hack at it. First and third for BYU. No one out. Top of the second of a tie ball game. 1-1 one, one our score. And Ro Hoster will again go back to first. Jacob Rogers, it was during BP Friday before the doubleheader that uh, there was a cross throw that caught Jacob in the eye. It forced him to actually come out of off the roster for Friday and was back okay on Saturday and did pinch hit Saturday. And that's a plunk. So Mason Strong gets hit, and the bases are now loaded. No one out. We just saw bases loaded, no one out for Utah in the yeah. bottom of the first, and now we see bases loaded, no one out for BYU. Can the Cougs make more of it than Utah did? All Utah got out of bases loaded, no out, was a sacrifice fly, one run across. And now it is Dawson Hall hitting with the sacks stacked. Deming at third. Rodgers moves to second. On the HBP, and on the HBP, Mason Strong finds himself at first base. And it looks like we're going to get a yep. pitching change. So he doesn't get out of the second inning. Randon Hoster will go one complete, and that is it. As with no one out in the top of the second, it'll be a Utah pitching change on a staff day for Utah. And it did not go well for Randon Hoster. So with bases loaded and no one out, it'll be Dawson Hall, who's had a couple of... Uh, couple of multi-run big flies early in his freshman career. Dawson Hall will be digging in when we come back to Salt Lake City. Let's take a 60-second pitching change break for the Utes. It's BYU 1, Utah 1, top of the second on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. For more BYU baseball, let's rejoin the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. New pitcher for Utah is Dusty Schramm. The right-hander relieves Randon Hostert. Hostert got Utah into a jam here in the top of the second. Base is loaded. No one out. And Dawson Hall hitting with the sacks stacked in the first meeting between BYU and Utah. Schramm went one and two-thirds, gave up two hits, no runs, walked two, and struck out a batter. Schramm now enters with no one out in the top of the second. And again, three on for BYU. Schramm making his 14th appearance. He's pitched at 20 and a third innings. Has given up 16 hits, five runs, four of them earned. He's walked more than he struck out, however. Don't see that all the time. Eight Ks and nine bases on balls issued by Schramm. Two wild pitches. Schramm does have a nice win-loss record on the year, 4-0, and oh, and a nice ERA at 1.77. Dawson Hall hitting with the bases loaded. And Dawson has had one of these opportunities this year, and he got a hit with the bases loaded. So one for one is Hall with the sacks stacked. And BYU as a team, 375 on the season with the bases juiced, 21 for 56 in this situation. Huge difference from where it was last year. That's one night. of the biggest strides that yeah, the night team's made. Empty count for Hall. Left-handed bat, righty on the hill. And that's a chopper foul just off the bag down the first baseline. So Deming at third, Rogers at second, Strong at first, and Dawson Hall in his first at-bat tonight. Bases loaded. Makes good use of his hits. Six RBI on his five hits. He's another one that didn't play in the first game against Utah five weeks ago. The 0-1 to Hall. Schramm from the stretch. Kicks and fires. A swing and a miss, and Schramm gets ahead of Hall 0-2. On deck is Ozzie Pratt. Pratt and Watkins do up for BYU. Hall hits with the bases loaded in a 1-1 ball game. And BYU untied this game here in the top of the second inning. 
They've already squared it at one after Utah opened the scoring in the bottom of the first. Schramm comes set. Didn't get the call outside edge. Randy Sutton judges ball one. Sutton behind the plate. Brandon Vandermeid at first base. Travis Roberts at second. And Darren Hyman at third. Those are your Pac-12 arbiters tonight. This game being seen on the Pac-12 network. Good to have you hearing it, hearing it with us on the BYU Sports Network. The one-two from Schramm. And Dawson Hall fists that. Foul down the third baseline. Good battle. Just want to see him shorten it up here. Try to put something in play so we can get that run home from third. Utah's uh, going to stay in double play depth, so they're willing to give up the run to get two. BYU got out of that first with a double play. BYU, a top 15 team nationally in double plays turn per game. 11th nationally coming in two tonight. And that did the trick in the first. The one-two to Hall. Hall lifts it in the air. Is it deep enough? Center fielder. Looks like it might be enough. Will make the catch. Tagging and scoring easily is Deming. And the Cougars go in front, 2-1. to one. So it's another RBI for Dawson Hall. A sacrifice fly to center. Plenty of carry on that one. Did his job. So both teams have scored on sack flies to center field. Dawson Hall, RBI number seven on the year. So seven RBI on five hits is a pretty good ratio. And Dawson Hall bring, brings home run number two, and Deming scores to give the Cougars a lead of two to one. So Ryan Sapedi and now Austin Deming have come across. First and second, one out for the top of the order, Ozzie Pratt. The left-handed bat of Ozzie Pratt against the righty, Dusty Schramm. Empty count, and so it's back-to-back -back lefty bats with Hall followed by Pratt. And ball one. As that's off speed at 76. One ball, no strikes. One out and two on for BYU. Rogers at second. Strong at first. And Ozzie Pratt in the box. The light's just now coming on here at Smith's Ballpark. Thought they might have been on earlier. As that's grounded to first. Beza will go to second. Throw low, and they won't get anyone. Oh, did they get him? They did. Oh, wow. Wow. That throw was bounced to second base. And I thought in that time, Strong got in ahead of it, but no. They say he secured it, and they'll get the out at second. So it'll be Pratt reaching on a fielder's choice. Now will create corners with two out for Brock Watkins. I thought it was going to be bases loaded again for BYU one out, but they got the out at second, Duff. I'm with you, Greg. I thought he had actually pulled him off the bag. Great job by uh, the shortstop to just hang in there long enough to keep his foot on the bag. So that's a 3-6 fielder's choice. And erased on the base pass on the 3-6 is Mason Strong. So going to third is Rogers. Pratt's at first for Brock Watkins. Watkins gets a barrel to it. Deep to left center. And that will be gone! A three-run shot as the Cougars take a five-run lead. That was hammered to left center. Brock Watkins... Makes it a five-run inning for BYU. Two out, two on, and that ball was gone. Boy, that was hammered. That's a good way to put it. You could just tell off the bat that that thing had a shot. Deepest part of the ballpark. A Zions Bank home run for BYU. For banking that helps you game plan for life, Zions Bank is for you. Homer number four, and RBI is 20, 21, and 22. For BYU's hits and runs leader, Brock Watkins. And that'll be a chopper up the middle, handled by the shortstop. The fire to first, and he beat it. Oh, just a half step ahead was the throw of Mitch McIntyre. So Mitch McIntyre retired on the 6-3 ground out. That'll do it for BYU. But the Cougs score five runs on four hits. The big blast, a three-run shot from Brock Watkins. There were no errors, and there was... No one left on. We go bottom two, BYU 5, Utah 1 on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is BYU Baseball. Now back to the ballpark and the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Bottom of the second and leading off for the Utes, first baseman Alex Bezer. The count is 1-1. One and one. Peyton Cole's first ball to Bezer was a ball. Second one fouled back to the sweet level here at Smith's Ballpark. The count even and the score uneven. Thanks to a five-run top of the second from BYU. Two balls and a strike now as Peyton's high and inside on the change. 
Two balls and a strike to Beza. Crooked number inning in the second. Five runs scored for BYU. That's a swing and a miss out in front of it is Beza. So two balls, two strikes to the Ute first baseman. Peyton Cole into his second inning of work and has a 5-1 lead with which to work. The 2-2. That's in the air and uh, foul territory into the seats down the third baseline. The count will stay at 2-2. Two and two. BYU with back-to-back-to-back hits to start the second inning. Double, double, and single. After a hit by pitch low to the bases and a sack fly brought in one, Brock Watkins went yard for a three-run shot to put BYU on top five to one. And that's the score here in the bottom of the second. Turning on it is Beza, and that's going to get down into the right field corner. Sapiti will give chase. Turning at first is Beza. The throw comes in. It's cut off. And sliding into second with a double is Alex Beza. So the lead runner reaches for a second consecutive inning. Kai Roberts led off the first with a base on balls. He scored. And now Alex Beza leads off the second with a double. No one out for Davis Kopp. Will now bat with a runner in scoring position. That was laced to the right field corner by Alex Beza. His reached base streak now moves to six games with that double in his first at bat. Got a pitch he was looking for. It looked like saw something on the inner half and just turned on it. Still warming in the BYU bullpen is the right-hander Jake Porter. Peyton Cole in his first career start has had base runners to deal with in both innings of his work tonight. Foul to the screen by Davis Kopp. It'll be 0-1. Kopp's playing well. Hits in 10 of his last 11 coming into tonight. In tennis, you have the Davis Cup. In Ute baseball, you've got Davis Kopp. <laughs> the 0-1. The kick and fire from Cole. And that's opposite field over the roof. And into out of play for strike two. So Cole gets ahead of Kopp here 0-2. Head in the count, and he's behind on both of those pitches. So you got to be really careful here to not give him something that speeds up his bat. Maybe get him to chase something up and away. Or Cop hitting 346 and hitting 395 with runners in scoring position. So that number jumps up with the chance to drive him in, and he's got a runner at second. He'll take high and away for ball one. One ball, two strikes to Davis Cop. So Utah scored just the three in the first meeting against BYU. Cougs won 10-3, but two of the runs driven in that night were from this guy, Davis Kopp, in a two-run double. Ended up being thrown out, trying to stretch it to a triple in that game, as I recall. Yes, he did. So the one-two from Cole to Kopp. Runner on second is Beja, leadoff double. And that'll be line to Jacob Will. They can't double him off as getting back to second was Beza, but one gone as Cop lines it right into the glove of the BYU first baseman. Good job by Will to just stay on that ball because that ball is slicing away from him pretty hard, as hard as it was hit, and just stay with it. Interim head coach Trent Pratt is out and will end Peyton Cole's night. So he will call for Jake Porter. It's a PZ Printing pitching change brought to you by PZ Printing. PZ Printing, nothing inspires like print. We're going to stay right here as Jake Porter comes into the game. So Peyton Cole goes one and a third. He was the opener for tonight. It's going to be a staff day, Duff, and that means sure. a lot of pitchers will pitch. And so Peyton got into the second inning and will now see Jake Porter enter for BYU. Yeah, the has idea, a 5-1 lead. The idea behind a staff day is basically you want to see a lot of guys pitch, and you don't want to use anybody that you've got to have on the weekend, you know, that's going to play an important role in trying to win conference games and uh, get a chance to, you know, get a guy some work. So Jake Porter will get work, having last pitched on the weekend at Nebraska. Two and two-thirds in BYU's Saturday 4-3 win in Lincoln. On the year, Jake has gone 10 and a third, has given up less than a hit per inning. Nine hits in those 10 and a third, has walked just three, so whipped just over one, and he's doubled his number of walks with strikeouts. Six to three in the K to BB ratio. His ERA is a tidy 2.61. No decisions on the year for Jake. 
and Porter will enter with one out and one on. Utah got a leadoff double from Alex Beza. Davis copped the line out, so Cook's got the first out with no one advancing. And I'll see what Carter Booth will do in his first at-bat. The center fielder Booth is due up to face the right-hander, Jake Porter. Porter, the 5'11", 200-pound freshman out of South Weber, Utah, and Northridge High School. So Jake on the hill as the Utes look to dig back from a 5-1 deficit. Utes took the lead 1-0 in the first, but a five-run second for BYU gives a nice lead for Jake Porter to work with. I like that BYU has come out and scored early, similar to the last time they were up here against Utah. We had five in the first three innings, five in the first two tonight. But you also have to not kind of like coast either because these games with all the pitchers that are coming in tend to be a little bit higher scoring games. Empty count, one out, one on. Carter Booth, the center fielder, hits. Righty v. Righty here, and that's fouled to the screen for strike one. The Cougs do very well in breaking out early with uh, the 5-1 score here tonight, Duff. BYU's first two innings tally is now 48-30 to in BYU's favor. That's getting a lot of work done in the early innings. And one of the challenges that we faced last year in the 2021 season, we just did not score a lot of runs early on. Had to come from behind a lot. BYU's played well with the lead this season. The 0-1, high for ball one at 88 from Jake Porter. So not only have the Cougars played well with the lead this year, in fact, when they lead after just three innings, they're 12-2. and two. But they also play well, one coming from behind. All three of their wins in Lincoln on the weekend were comeback wins. They were down 2 nothing in all three wins. I can't remember a time where a team won by one run in three straight games coming from behind at any level over the years of watching baseball and coaching baseball. And yeah, they, so they were remarkable. down 2 nothing and won them all, and they won them all by exactly one run. And even the one game that Nebraska won was one nothing <laughs> exactly. on Thursday, another one-run game. So all four in the series decided by a single run. Clutch hitting and pitching needed throughout that weekend, and the Cougs got it for three wins and four outings. The 2-1 from Porter to Booth. Taking his leadoff second is Beza. That's in the dirt, so Jake, of his first five pitches, first four pitches, have seen three called balls. So 3-1 the count, one out, and one on. We're in the bottom of the second. BYU a 5-1 lead over Utah. They won the first game 10-3 five weeks ago tonight, and the Cougs are out strong in this one. Porter looks back at second, comes Plateward, and that'll be a called strike. Top half of the zone. So the count will be full. Carter Booth. Booth in a bit of a rut. Three for his last 17 at the plate with seven strikeouts. He's third on the team in K's. The 3 2 to Booth. Off speed popped up. Ozzie Pratt will call for it and make the catch just on the dirt. Your second base, and so the Cougs have gone leadoff double to line out and pop up. So now it's two gone and one on for Utah. The leadoff double given up to Beza, but nothing since BYU got a leadoff double in the second, turned it into a five-run inning. So the Cougs have put the clamps on after giving up that first hit to Beza here in the second. It'll bring up Gabe Singer, the nine-hitter, the shortstop. Only his fourth game played this year, and this is Utah's 36th game played on the year. So seldom used shortstop. Gabe Singer hitting with a man on, and two gone. We're in the bottom of the second inning. Singer looking for his first hit. He's 0 for 5 on the season. Didn't play against BYU five weeks ago in the first meeting. 1-0 from Porter to Singer. Porter kicks and fires. Hits the gas and called strike on the inside edge. Turning away from it was Singer, and that's a called strike. One and one the count to Singer. Interesting how many guys did not play in that first game just a few weeks ago on both sides. Very different-looking setup both ways. Even more so for BYU. The 1-1 from Porter to Singer. That'll be in the dirt. Good block there from Mason Strong. In addition to Mason's offensive weekend that helped to win him the WCC Player of the Week honors, he was strong defensively. He threw out his first two uh, base runners as a BYU catcher over Glad the weekend to see at Lincoln. Him healthy, Greg. You know, yep, knee issue kind of slowed his progress. The, yep. the two-one, 
to Singer. Jay kicks and fires. Foul to the screen. Foul to the BYU dugout screen. That'll wake you up. So 2-2 two, two the count. Two out. Man on second. Scoreboard yet to catch up with the count, but it is 2-2. Two and two. Scoreboard shows 2-1, two and one, but it's two balls and two strikes to Gabe Singer. Does Jake have a wipeout pitch here? Porter. Gets a signal from Mason Strong and from the stretch. Jake with a look back to second, kicks and fires. That's a chopper to shortstop. Watkins will handle, settle, fire, and that'll do it. So after giving up a leadoff double, it's one, two, three, a line out, a pop up, and a ground down. We go to the top of the third for Utah in the bottom of the second. No runs on a hit. There were no errors. A runner was left on. BYU 5, Utah 1, top three next here on the new skin. BYU Sports Network. For more BYU baseball, let's rejoin the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. BYU brought eight to the plate in the second inning. We start the third with BYU leading at 5-1. to one. Jacob Wilk will lead off BYU's third. He flew out to right field in the first. It wasn't just a fly out. That was a diving catch out from Kai Roberts in right field to end the BYU first because Jacob put a swing on it. That looked like it was going to get down to score a run. In the first, it did not. The Cougars made amends by scoring five in the second as Jacob takes ball one from Dusty Schramm. Second pitcher of the night for Utah is the righty, Dusty Schramm. Kicks and fires, and that's two balls. No strikes to Jacob Wilk. Jacob on the year hitting 297. Hitting, hitting close to the same number when leading off. He's 286 on his leadoff number. The 2-0. Jake's really been hot in WCC play. I mean, if you look at the numbers just in those games, he's hitting 450 with a slugging percentage of 900. He's leading in like four or five different categories in the WCC games only. Doesn't matter tonight because we're playing out of conference, but still he's swinging a hot bat. The 3 0 becomes a four pitch walk. And Jacob Wilk, with that walk, Duff has now reached base in 14 consecutive games played. Great stuff. I'm a real get on base kind of guy. I like the, uh, I think, you know, your on base percentage is an important stat in baseball. It really is. And the Cougars have a lead runner aboard for the second consecutive inning. So with Jacob Wilk on first, Ryan Sapiti who led off the second with a double, got things going for BYU in that second inning, and he ended up scoring the first of five runs for BYU in the second. Sapiti hits with Wilk at first base. No one out here in the top of the third. BYU five and Utah one. That'll be fouled to the backstop. No balls and a strike to Ryan Sapiti. A pretty full day of play in the WCC out of conference. Of the 10 WCC teams, nine are playing non-league games today. The only one not playing is the team coming to BYU this weekend. San Diego will be traveling tomorrow, so they're not going to play tonight. And they'll be playing BYU Thursday, Friday, Saturday. It's strike one taken by Sapiti in the... Sorry, ball one taken by Sapiti in the back pick thrown to first base. Wilk gets back in time. So one ball, one strike, two Sapiti, and Wilk on first base. We'll give you some of the scores that have already gone final so far today in non-conference WCC play, including one wild one in Vegas as that's dirted to Sapiti. A good block by the catcher, Davis Kopp, and two balls and a strike to Ryan Sapiti. BYU sitting on, or Sapiti sitting on 27 RBI to lead the team. Really been hitting well in the clutch all year long, driving in runs when we've had to have them, and just doing an outstanding job with that. He's second to Brock Watkins in total bases. That'll be a swing and a miss, but the ball gets away from the catcher. And advancing to second is Jacob Wilk. He's now in scoring position. Good read by Wilk. Saw that was going to be in the dirt. Was off and running well before it was away from the catcher. So the count even to Sapiti at 2-2. Two and two. And now runner at second for Sapiti. No one out. Top three. BYU 5 and Utah 1. They'll call it a pass ball. That's uh, Utah's eighth pass ball of the season. As Kopp let it get by him. The 2-2 two -two to Sapiti. He'll take outside. The count is full to Ryan Sapiti with Jacob Wilk on second base. I wouldn't be surprised to see him hit one in the gap or hit one where he can get uh, Wilk to score because this one he's at his best. That's the wind is blowing out to right. It would be opposite field for Sapiti. Brock Watkins parked one to left center. Three-run shot in the second to add to his total base lead. 
Sapiti second in that category as mentioned. That's a swinging strikeout for Ryan Sapiti. Frontwards K and Wilk will stay where he is. One gone now here in the top of the third. BYU 5 and Utah 1. So the scores that have already gone final include Nevada defeating St. Mary's 13-3 in Reno. But UNLV defeated LMU 21-11. That was a 10-run rule game after 7. That was a 32-run performance between the two teams in only seven innings. UNLV wins it 21-11 after LMU won last night 16-12 at UNLV. That's a sharp shot to third, handled well by the third baseman. Looking Wilk back to second is Anderson. He'll fire to Beza at first and get Deming at first. And so it's two gone for BYU. So leadoff double for the Cougs, or leadoff a walk for the Cougs. A pass ball put Wilk at second, but a strikeout and a ground out. And now it's two out with Jacob Rogers hitting. UNLV 21, LMU 11 <laughs> in seven, seven innings. <laughs> <laughs> I know that spring football's going on, but that's crazy right there. Now UNLV is the nation's leading hits team, and they showed why with 21 runs on 21 hits today. And that's opposite field, high in the air to right by Rogers. Kai Roberts will settle it into his glove, and BYU's leadoff walk stays on the base pass. So we go to the bottom of the third for BYU. Top three, no runs, no hits, no errors. A runner was left on. We go bottom three, BYU five, Utah one, on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. For more BYU baseball, let's rejoin the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. A swing and a miss from Kai Roberts to open the Utah third. Jake Porter on the hill for BYU, second pitcher for the Cougs. Ahead of Roberts, 0-1-1. Roberts walked and scored the Utes' lone run in this game. That's high and away for ball one. 1-1 one one to Roberts. Roberts on a six-game hit streak coming into tonight. And with that base on balls on the first, his reach base streak is now 28 games and counting. That's pretty good, 28 games and counting. It's impressive, actually. He's got a teammate at 33 and wow. counting. T.J. Clarkson has reached in 33 straight coming in two tonight. The 1-2, by the way, to Kai Roberts. And that'll be a swinging strikeout. So a four-pitch out for Porter as whipping on that is Kai Roberts. He's down on strikes to open the third inning for Utah. BYU 5 and Utah 1 is our score. Greg Rubel and BYU Baseball Communications Director Duff Tittle alongside for commentary tonight. Real nice job of Jake to get him to chase one out of the zone. Throw one up in the zone, see if he'll go after it, and he sure did. Landon Fry reaching on the 5-4 fielder's choice in the first. He was stranded after a base on balls, pushed him to second. The hits leader for Utah, Landon Fry, hitting 353 on the year. 48 hits to pace the Utes. The 1-0 from Porter. Inside for ball two. No one up in the BYU pen. It's calm for the moment. There's action in the Utah bullpen. There's a lefty up. Bryson Van Sickle is warming as Jake Porter's first three balls to Fry are all balls, 3-0. and So you'd think take here from Fry. See if Porter can pipe one in to stay alive in the count. Jake kicks and fires and lost it. It's a wild pitch. And so a four-pitch walk. It's a one-out walk for Fry and the Utes here in the bottom of the third. So base on balls, and Fry is aboard for the second time in as many plate appearances. His first reach was a fielder's choice, and now there's action in the BYU bullpen on that pitch. That was enough to put some arms up, get them warm on a staff day for the Cougs. BYU leading Utah 5-1, to one. but this is a very potent Utah team. They can score runs in bunches. Their batting average a good 40 points higher than BYU. Empty count, one out, one on. Ooh, chin music to Chase Anderson, who drops to the ground to avoid that high heat from Jake Porter. Ball one. So getting resetting his bearings is Chase Anderson. Interim head coach... Todd Williams is going to come on out and ask the umpire to maybe have a chat with Jake Porter. I think Anderson's okay. The trainers come on out to make sure that Anderson's fine. Again, he wasn't, I don't think he was hit. He did hit the deck, though. And now the umpires are all conferencing. Maybe they're going to see, ask if there was maybe contact with the batter. I think he's asking for the, um, the home plate umpire to get some help to see if there was. 
I think he's convinced that he did get hit. So they've conferenced, and they're going to keep Anderson in the batter's box. So just ball one. Hopefully it'll give Jake a second to also regroup. Kind of went through Roberts pretty early, pretty easily in that first at bat, and yep. then just a walk on four pitches, and then collected a fifth ball here. So lefty it's Boston Anderson. Mavius and righty Bryce Robinson are both up in the BYU pen. And as Coach Trent, Trent Pratt said in our pregame interview, all hands on deck for BYU on the mound to win this game. The 1-0 to Anderson. He'll take, and there's a strike, a called strike for Jake Porter. Evens the count with one out and one on. The one on is Landon Fry after a one-out walk. Chase Anderson, four-game hit streak, a modest four-game hit streak coming in two tonight. He walked in his first plate appearance in the first. He was stranded. The 1-1. One, one. That's hit in the air to center. Mitch McIntyre is going to go back. Set his feet to shy the track. Make the catch and retreating to first is Fry. Two are gone for BYU here in the bottom of the third. I really like the pitch calls on that. Greg, he was struggling trying to find the strike zone with a fastball. So the coach is giving him an off speed. Throws a little change up for a strike. Then the next pitch he gets the fastball over the plate again. T.J. Clarkson looking to keep the inning alive for the Utes. Clarkson on a 10-game hit streak to go along with that 33-game on-base streak. Did not reach in the first. It was a sack fly. Scoring the Utes' only run. Scored Roberts. And that'll be ball one from Porter to Clarkson. T.J. Clarkson, left fielder for the Utes. with RBI number 32. He's Utah's RBI leader. Added to his tally with that sack fly to center in the first inning. After a fly to center from Chase Anderson making two out, Clarkson now hits with two out and one on. From the bottom of the third, BYU five and Utah one. Cougars five in the second. After Utah opened the scoring with one in the bottom of the first. Fry takes his lead. Porter working first base side of the rubber from the stretch and goes off speed for ball two. 80 miles an hour off the fingertips. Two balls, no strikes. Two out for the Utes. Their red jerseys, white pants. BYU in the all-gray pinstripes. The Navy pins on the gray road unis. And Trent Pratt will saunter on out. And that'll be the night for Jake Porter. Bryce Robinson will enter the game after a PZ Printing pitching change. Brought to you by PZ Printing. PZ Printing, nothing inspires like print. A 60-second break, followed by BYU's third pitcher of the night next year on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is BYU Baseball. Now back to the ballpark and the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Bottom of the third here in Salt Lake City, Smith's Ballpark, home of the Utah Utes, also the Salt Lake Bees. And with BYU leading at 5-1, Bryce Robison enters the game, the right-hander. Having pitched 35 and a third, after going 6 and a third, and getting a start in the second game of two in Friday's doubleheader in Lincoln, BYU won that game 7-6. to six. No decision for Bryce. In that start, he gave up seven hits, five runs, all were earned on the year. He's given up 30 hits in 35 and a third. 14 runs, 13 of them earned. A better than four to one strikeout to walk ratio at 27 Ks to six free passes. Giving up just one homer on the year. It came in that Nebraska game on Friday. Price's ERA is 3.31. And he leads BYU in wins with five and win percentage at 5-0. and oh. And the first batter Bryce Robinson will face is T.J. Clarkson, Utah's RBI leader. And he enters the game with a 2-0 and oh count to Clarkson. So it got to 2-0 and oh from Porter, Jake Porter that is, and he was replaced by Bryce Robinson mid-count. So Clarkson sees a righty followed by a righty on the hill. Two balls, no strikes. And that's ball three. There's a runner on first. We note that because Bryce Robinson has four of BYU's ten pickoffs on the year. And Utah base runners have been picked off 11 times. That's a high number for BYU and against Utah. 
That's a four-pitch walk. Two from Porter and two balls from Robison. And it's first and second with two out for the Utes. Fry will go from first to second on the base on balls issued T.J. Clarkson. So first and second with two gone here in the bottom of the third. And Jaden Kiernan, Utah's batting average leader, now hitting. And he grounded into an inning-ending double play in the first. And that was an inning that saw Utah go bases loaded, no one out. They got only one run across, and it wasn't on a hit. It was on a sack fly. That's high from Roby for 1-0. So the first three pitches Bryce Robinson has thrown are all balls. One ball, no strikes, two out, two on. Utah trailing four here in the bottom of the third. Kiernan on a streak of seven games reaching base. Has yet to reach tonight. He checks wings. And the appeal to first is no dice. And so that's six straight balls thrown by BYU pitchers right now. 2-0 and oh to Kiernan. He's got to reset here, maybe give him a different pitch, give him something he can throw that has some confidence in. The right-hander Roby on the hill. The 2-0 from Bryce. Winds up and delivers outside, but gets the edge. So paint job for strike one, two balls and a strike. Home plate umpire Randy Sutton giving Bryce the outside corner and the hitter Kiernan wanting to know exactly what it was that Sutton saw from that pitch. And he nods his head in affirmation. All right, I'll reset and await the 2-1. The 2-1. That's fouled on the ground down the first baseline. The count goes to 2-2. Two and two. So from 2-0 two and oh to 2-2, two and two, we'll see if Roby goes wipeout pitch here with two gone and two on for Utah here in the bottom of the third inning. Great job by Roby to battle back. Just settle in and throw some strikes. Make him beat you. Umpire's delaying play for a moment here. Something to do with... With Ro Roby's sleeve? Yeah, or arm. He's He's they're, they're allowing him to, to rosin up his, his left forearm. Hmm. I think, I think they thought that he was going to, to maybe sweat on that... Rubbed his pitching hand on his... Yeah. Free, on his free yeah. arm, so they, they made him rosin up his forearm. That could be it. Can't, can't imagine with the weather tonight that yeah. there's sweat. Working out much of a sweat <laughs> when it's about 50 degrees out there. The wind blowing out to right. Anyway, we're back in, and Roby looks in for the signal from Mason Strong on the 2-2. Kicks and fires, and that's laced to left field, and it'll be to the track and bouncing off the wall. One will score, two will score, and it's a two-run double for Jaden Kiernan. Utah makes it a two-run game, 5-3. to three. A two-out double to left center, as all Dawson Hall could do was give chase and watch it bounce off the track and to the wall. Yeah, unfortunately, you got a 2-2 count. He left one over the plate. A little bit too good of a pitch. So Utah gets right back in the game with a two-RBI double. Scoring from second is Fry, and from first is Clarkson. And it's a 5-3 ball game. So Jaden Kiernan bringing home two and making it a two-run game. Two out for Alex Beza. He doubled in his last at-bat. Takes strike one from Rope Robison. So Landon Fry scores. T.J. Clarkson scores. As Jaden Kiernan... Drives home two. 5-3 Cougs, bottom three. The 0-1. A foul tip strike. 0-2 to Alex Beza. Beza has reached base in six consecutive games, including tonight with a second-inning double. He was stranded after a leadoff double for Utah in the second. Top of the frame, BYU put up five to make it 5-1. It's now 5-3, and that's outside. Chase pitch 1-2 and two at 85 miles per hour from Bryce Robison. That was a two-out, two-run double for Jaden Kiernan. Kiernan with RBIs 24-25 and 25 on the season. The 1-2 to Beza. He leads Utah in strikeouts with 45 on the year. And that will be a single into right field. Mitch McIntyre, the center fielder, will cut it off, but scoring from second easily is Kiernan. And it's 
Back-to-back hits with two out, scoring three for Utah here in the bottom of the third. And a runner on first for Davis Kopp, who hits with two gone. Alex Beza with an RBI single to right, scoring Kiernan from second. It's a good piece of hitting, you know, just staying on a ball and hit it hard. So Alex Beza goes single in the third after doubling in the second. And his single doubles home a run. And Utah with a crooked inning third, already three across to make it a one-run game. BYU leads, but now but just one at 5-4. to four. Davis Kopp is the hitter. And all these runs crossing Duff with two out here in the third. Utah coming into tonight was a really good two-out hitting team. 299 on the year with two out coming into tonight, and they've upped that number. The 1-0. And they'll be grounded sharply to Brock Watkins. He'll take the easy out at second. So on the 6-4, Utah's retired. Kooks keep the lead, but the lead's down to one for Utah in the bottom of the third. Three runs on two hits. There were no errors. A runner was left on. We go to the top of the fourth. BYU 5 and Utah 4 the score on the new skin. BYU Sports Network.